Hey guys, Darwin here. Today I'm gonna show you how to code a real multiplayer game in ClickTeam. The reason to this is the fact that I haven't seen a lot of Lay Swing tutorials or multiplayer tutorials for ClickTeam on YouTube. So I've decided to create my own tutorial. So here I've created a brand new frame in fact I can create it again simple as this so let's begin with two things first of all for lease swing to work properly you might want to join under a username now you have two options you can either insert a text box and a button to connect which is what we're gonna do today or you could hypothetically generate a random username with some length which might not overlap with others and if it does then generate another one but for the sake of simplicity we'll just add a text box and you can then connect so first since this is a multiplayer game we need to add the extension that makes the entire thing work so right click and insert an object or double click and the menu will open to create a new object insert the lacewing relay client now recently the lacewing blue client well recently 2017 I guess the lacewing blue client which is a more updated version of the lacewing relay client has appeared it's very similar but for the sake of this video we'll just use the normal lacewing relay client the old one so insert a lacewing relay client object now you can rename this to anything I'd like to rename it to lacewing and you'll see why in a second then let's also rename the frame we're working in to something easier such as login because this is the menu where you say your name and connect your application name can be literally anything doesn't really matter nor does the login nor does lacewing matter uh, the names at least so yeah Let's just rename this to uh, example. So if we run the application at the moment, nothing happens. We'll see it says example. So this is something you're not forced to do, but I'm just going to turn off the menu bar right here and remove everything so I don't have shortcuts. Um, again, something you don't have to do necessarily. It's just because I created a new application. Now, let's go in here and let's color the background a bit differently so you can see things a bit better another unnecessary step now we must insert an object to be able to add text in and then a connect button so let's add those so the object we'll use is the edit box object and it will put in this box right here you can center it or scale it i like to make it a, a small size not too big about five of these square things make sure or you can enable the grid from here but again nothing necessary just so you can align things better then let's insert a button which should be this and here we go then let's make the button a bit larger and now we have these objects these are the main login objects now we'll simply change the name of this to let's say name symbol so i right click rename because if i double click i don't think it would work as you can see and on the empty button if you double click it opens so you can change the text let's say this says connect so you can say anything it's just a display function and right click rename to rename the button to connect also because it's easier to remember so this is name this is connect we have it in the list here now let's move on to the next step which is a bit of code so you need a server for this to work or you could technically use the lacewing relay server which would host a server using your own pc uh, on a LAN port but for the sake of this tutorial we'll just use a proper server a list of a nice amount of servers is at dark slash wire.com 
relay. So this link right here, so dark dash wire com slash relay will give you a list of the current sites or the sites that were active a lot of them shut down but the main ones still work. If you want server one darkwire.com this is for the windows and sfswf support so this is for flash this is the one you want to use now if you want to make an online game that works in the web browser you would use the sswf but since it's since Flash has been recently deprecated uh, and HTML5 is taking its place instead, um, I don't think you can create a lot of multiplayer games unless you make it with Flash uh, if you really, really want to. It would work, but HTML5 does not support Lacewing at the time. Lacewing Blue is supported by Windows and Android, but the current one which is just this one it, I don't think is supported by Android or that's how I remember it but it doesn't matter for this tutorial. this is for Windows I suppose so let's go in the event editor or control E we will create a new condition so first let's set an always condition so we always want to know what the text of name is we can't directly use it or we can but it's much better and it's always suggested that when you have an edit box or a string or something, well maybe not a string, but an edit box or a rich text uh, object, you always want to go in the values and insert an alterable string which determines the text of it. So what I did is I went in its settings, in the AZ icon which is values, I added a new alterable string called text. So this is alterable string A as you would call it without a name, but you might not remember that as easily. So let's just always set the alterable string, which is text, as you can see, let's set it to the text of the box. So let's get the text of the box, edit text, dollar of name in quotes. So you see how I put the name of the objects in the quotes, that's why I renamed this lacewing and did not leave it as lacewing relay client. For the convenience. Now we have this set so let's create a new condition of when you press the button it will connect you using the username. So let's say the following. If the, if the button is clicked right click the dot here and insert a logical operator. Again this is an unnecessary step but I do advise it. You can add an event which says if you if the keyboard upon pressing the key if you press enter it will do the same thing this is just a convenience factor which is not necessary you could just use enter or the button but I think having both is good so if the button is clicked then let's also check to see this text box is empty so we add a new condition this alterable values compared to one of the alterable things if the text is equal to nothing but we don't want it to equal to that so move here set it to different let's also add it again because we want it before the or operator make sure that the button clicked is above text of a this might be useful for mmf2 or multimedia fusion 2 users which do not see the orders with green now, upon pressing this, if this text differs from the following, we will connect to the server we copied, which is server one dark wire car six one two one. You need this. Do not ignore it. Okay. Now, we add a new condition. So, if we connect on connect, we will set your username. So. Let's set the name to the alterable string or the get text, both do the same. So let's retrieve the text, text of name. Set the name to the text of the edit box. Now let's also add a fail save, which will be connection on connection denied. So the old version of Lacewing has a problem where if you connected once and were denied, cannot reconnect again 
So, in case the connection is denied, let's make sure we restart the application so everything can be restarted and it will work. So far, everything seems to work. If you press, it won't work because it doesn't have text, but if you do this, it will work. So nothing happens, it's just connected. So nothing happens. On connect, I also like to make sure that this control read only on. So when you connect, then you may not edit this anymore. And you can even do control enabled off if you want to be extra careful. I want to say I accidentally for that. So let's see. Error and this gets the same. Cool. Now let's move on to the next step, which would be um, on connect. So after you connected and after your name is set. Since the connection denied has something to deal with, let's also insert a logical operator in case this name, this um, something happens on error. It's literally on error the first thing. So in case something happens, something fails, or the connection is denied, maybe you have the same username, or maybe the server is full, then this will happen. Now let's check for the if the name is set. We've set the name here. Let's also add an OR operator that if the name is denied, then the same thing happens. So if two users have the same username, the server won't allow you to connect. Now, on name set, let's also join a channel. So let's channel join. Now you can add anything here, but I would want to add something which does not repeat or exist in other games that might be running the same server per se. So let's call this example a mash of numbers. It really doesn't matter because this is not something you will see. Hide channel from this. Now if you want, hide it. If not, don't. It's as simple as it gets. When you retrieve a list in the game, you might need it for let's say a list to say which channel would you like to join or a lobby selector. If you would not want to hide it, then leave it as no or zero. If you would want to hide it and don't care about this, add X. Since I don't want it to be seen by any other application by accident, I'll hide it. When you close the ch when you leave, will the channel close automatically? Since more people may connect further, I do not want to close. But you might want to close it if it's per se a private conversation with someone or a chatting application. Now, after the name is set, you will join the following channel. Now, let's um, sorry, um, make sure we test for the denied join. So we create the OR operator again, and we add this. And we want to replace this with on channel join. So we join the channel, we test it. So in case any of these errors happen, so far the app will just restart. You could add an error, a string to reset it, or if you had a loading thing, it would add like a red thing, or whatever you want. But for now, just restart the app, so if it doesn't work. Now, when you join the channel, you will be done with the frame. So you can simply move on to the next one. The connection will still exist, it doesn't disappear between frames, so you can just jump to the next frame. Something I forgot to add. So let's right click new frame and let's call this main or game or whatever. So this will jump to frame. So now let's test for it. Of course, uh, I added this in the middle after I connected. You may move this and add it here. So nothing's changed and you can delete this. So I didn't change anything, I just copied and added it below. It still tests for the same thing. I didn't change anything. Order does not matter when it comes to these things. Now, let's run the application for it so we can test it. So it seems to work so far. So let's add DR for Darwin or something. And if we connect, as you can see, we'll dot, move on to the next frame. Now, we need the lacing object here too. You can just drag and drop it from here 
so you can have the same name so you don't have to change it again and you may add some objects now let's say the object you play with is um, an eight direction object what is an eight direction well let me demonstrate if you run the frame if you use the arrow keys it just moves in a direction it's a standard clipping object now let's give it a texture so it can differentiate you from other players let's say orange now we need to create another object so let's clone all the object do not copy paste it it would not work let's color this with a very different color one of these is your character one of them is the peer or the other players every other player and in the following tutorials i'll also show you how you can differentiate the players so let's move on to setting your own player let's rename this to self character or car for character short and let's name this to peer car so they're both doing the same thing of course you do not want this to be an eight directions you do not want to move both so if you have it like this we'll just move both you do not want this you want this to be a static object it's a must do make sure you do it now we can move this here next one is each other the peer character will not be created by default so when you run the frame it doesn't exist well it exists in the memory but not in the game if we go in the event editor we can click it we must create a new condition which says that when you start the frame or start of frame on the chessboard or storyboard controls on the start of the frame you will be checked so we must peer the, we must loop the peers so if on a channel we loop the peers it means we're testing to see who else is on the server so we're loading the other players in now while the peers are looping or peers on your loop you will create the paper the purple objects so if there's more players by the way this doesn't matter where it is so it could be anywhere like here that will work too. so when you loop the peers if there's say two players on the server those two players say hey i'm on the server so those peers will be looped so when that peer says hey i exist we will create it in the frame and we will also do something special let's go into the purple objects values or the az thing and let's create an alterable value this time and let's rename this to id i would i prefer to call them all in capital it's not necessary or it can be any name as long as good team accepts it so you cannot say val per se this is not accepted so that's what i meant because it's a function in the editor now on the channel peer loop we will create the thing and we will also set its alterable values to the id of the peer the id of a peer is it's it's a unique number something you cannot confuse when you join the server the lacewing object automatically gives you an id so if we set this to um selected channel selected peer and id or peer underscore id of lacewing then it's gonna set it to the selected peers id which we selected because we're looping all the peers so goes through the first peer sets its id goes through second peer and so on now let's also do a test for when the peers connect so if a peer just happens to join a new player new player connects a new peer connects so everyone should get the message oh hey someone connected someone connected so we will do the exact same thing 
So this only tests for when you join and whoever's on at the time. When this ends, that's it. You do not repeat this. This is only to load who is currently on. This is not for the new players. So this makes sure that new players are indeed loaded. So we create this object and this object. Or uh, we set the ID and we create the object. Now, let's also check for when the gear disconnects. Now, you might think, how do we know which one to disconnect? So, channel peers, peer disconnect. How do we know which one to disconnect? Well, this is why we set the ID to peer ID. So, on peer disconnect, if the character we've just created and that was given this ID is having the ID we just selected. So this is called uh, something in uh, clicking terms, which I like to call it selecting an object. But some people like to call it something different. Can't really remember what it is right now, but uh, yeah, whatever. Probably add it while editing the video, so, um, or if I remember. So, that's why we set the ultra world values. We're trying to single out the object, the purple object. So if the ultra world value is equal to the peer underscore ID of the swing, which we know it was selected because look, here, on the peer disconnect, the swing knows which peer was disconnected. But when you delete the object after, after the frame, the game does not. So if the ID of the object in the game is equal to the one that Lacewing has stored, then we will destroy the object. Now, how do we set, how do we make sure that the positions of the objects or the peer character is seen by everyone, by your self character? So, your self character would move. For you, the other peer would look purple. But for the purple peer, if you look from their perspective, they are the orange ones and you are moving and you see this purple object moving so how do we tell the game to move the purple object well we have to send some binary data and this is important for every multiplayer game well it's not so important for chats because you do not need binary data you can just send text directly but if you make the game then make sure you have to send, make you send some binary data. so we always for constantly send some binary data but sending and blasting i want to clarify the difference sending something with lacewing is the equivalent of sending everything precisely making sure that is that sent yes it was sent blasting is more of a term which it it basically sends the binary data without checking it, it just sends it everywhere it could be wrong but for positions an error here or there does not affect everything at all because it's constantly updated. So it will eventually get it right and constantly get it right. So that's why. So the difference is that blasting is also quicker. So if you want the game to run smooth and fast, you would use blasting instead of sending. If you wanted to send something, for example, the animation frame of something, or let's say the direction of an object, if you're making, per se, a multiplayer game like uh, we're trying to revive Club Penguin, so you're making these objects and the animations of the penguin. You might want to send those animations separately as, let's say, one and two. You cannot just blast one and two, and it could be one or two or something else. You want to make sure it's one or two, so you send the and you don't blast. That's the difference. So, always we add some binary to send. We'll use shorts, which are basically neither integers or floats, they're just numbers. They're positional numbers. They're the same as an integer, basically, but not the same. It's a very small difference. So you can use either a short integer, float, all of these work, really. So we'll just use the first option, a short. We insert a short, which will be your position, not the purple things. Make sure it's your position because when the purple object moves, it moves you the position of an orange self character from someone else's computer screen. So you want to get their position and send that position for the purple object to 
obtain. So we send in their x coordinate. And we add another short. Let's add another short here, which is, well, different. It's their y coordinate. Now we have two shorts with the x and y position of the self object. Make sure it's the self object. And then we blast, as I've mentioned, the binary to the channel. Make sure it's to the channel. It's important. Now the sub channels. Let's say you have the position of something, but you also want to check for, let's say, not only the position, but the color of an object. So in the subchannel 0, you, would, you could send, per se, the position, and in the subchannel 1, you would send the color or whatever you want. So that's what subchannel 0 is. We have 255 numbers you can use. Uh, I think that's quite enough. 256, actually, because it's from 0 to 255. It's 256 uh, general address. Oh, that's, computers can use these fairly easily. So let's send it on subchannel 0, that's fine. And we are constantly sending the position. Now, we want, if, so if we receive this message, so message blasted and on, so make sure it's blasted because we blasted the, the message, you don't want the sent message. You blasted it, so sent won't work, but blasted will. So if a blasted message was received, from channel, okay, on binary message from channel, not from server, not from here, on binary message from channel, and on the zero subchannel, as we said, so from channel, make sure it's nothing else, then you will get, you will set the position to the send values, but who do we know, how do we know to set the position for that object. Well, we have the ID here. So let's drag that over there. We hold on the dot and drag it here. Then we set the position. So we selected it. So now it's going to be set properly. So we set the position x coordinate to the received binary data short unsigned. We did never say it's signed. So it's an unsigned short, or short, parenthesis, day swing, comma, and the index is zero. So the first index is zero for the x position. Now, I want you to remember something. OK, let's copy this. Let's just copy this. OK. And let's set the y position to the same thing, except the next index would not be 1, would actually be 2, OK? So one, so zero, two, four, eight. Okay, that's how you should remember them. They go from two to two to two. Text doesn't work like this, of course, because it doesn't have necessarily an index. It has null terminators usually. So that's a different thing. Uh, it's almost like a sign thing, the null terminator. But this works. Okay, so the short is set to zero and two. Okay, not one but two. So there's not much to add so we've looped our peers to make sure that we see everyone's position we connected and when we disconnected we destroy the objects all right so we always send the positions make sure we send the positions of the self object not the peer and we set the peers positions to the objects which were received and the short is zero and two they go from two to two that's all you should really remember. There's nothing else to say. Let's build the application to test it out. We can run two versions on the same PC. Let's call this example. And we've built it. Now we'll put this here and we'll run this. Avast might check it. No worries, nothing will happen. We'll just give it time it's a small app so it'll be, it will be done fairly quickly so when you open it everything should look like this as you've just done and you can open two or three or four for this test let's say we open four so we go in here let's add an, let's open another one 
let's say we want more players, more players are joining from everywhere around the world, and we want to test for each. Here's the object. Now let's just insert some of this stuff. So let's say dark net. He's connected, he's moving all jolly, it's moving here. Okay. Let's connect um someone. Okay. So someone has connected. For this we see this. So on the screen we see this guy. So we see if I move, it moves for him, and if he moves, it moves for me. Let's add let's move him next to you here. Or here, I guess. Let's insert the next person. Let's call this person. And a third person is added. So, first one, second one, and third one is over here. So, it sees you can see the latency by the way, I hope. But it's very, very close enough. Let's move it here and let's add um, the third person. Let's call him EAX or just pressing random buttons. So, this seems to work. Now let's say one disconnects, let's say someone disconnects or the first person for everyone seems to have disappeared because we said to destroy that person. This disconnects, so it's only these two guys. Alright, and we can leave. So that's the first tutorial on how to make a simple leaf swing application. You can use anything else for these instead of these objects. Um, this is how you set their positions at least and the basic general premise of how to do this we in the further tutorials I'll teach you how to set more things and I'll also show you so certain different techniques chat applications and etc thank you for watching I hope to see you in the next tutorial I hope you liked it if you have any question make sure you add it in the comment section. I, I'll try to look at it when I have time and answer it as detailed as I can. See you next time.